Hi there, and we're back with AEW this time, and somebody came back. Osprey came back. Yeah, it was Osprey. I don't even remember seeing this guy before. Well, he was on a um, for- Forbidden Door card. Oh, okay. All right. I must have. Okay. It wasn't a big match, I guess. Uh, it kind of was, but I don't, we, we couldn't watch it. That's why. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. We weren't able to watch that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so what's going on with him? Well, after this whole thing with Don Claus, Don Claus and Chris Jericho, you know, after the whole aftermath of that happening, once Chris ended up saying yes to join, but a lot of things happened after that. But because we have Will Osprey now coming back to uh, to uh, make, make a match with Chris Jericho at, at All In. Okay, so they are having a match. Yeah, it's already confirmed. All right. Okay, so then what do you think about Jericho saying yes to uh, to what's his name again? Don Callis. Don Callis. And then, of course, we know what happened after that. But before we do that, I mean, what do you think about saying yes to that? Did you think he was going to say yes? No. No? That was a complete surprise. I know you were surprised also. Yeah, I, I really didn't think so. I thought he was just going to go on his own. He wasn't going to say anything. Like, he wasn't going to pick him. Uh, you know, because it looked like he was conflicted uh, with, with his... Uh, with his team, yeah, with his uh, faction going away, and I, I, I think it was it was affecting him because he didn't tell him right away in the hallway or anything like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and join with you, so I'll give you my answer next week. Yeah, you would think he would have his answer there. You know what? If they want to be with me, then too bad. Yeah, uh, but he said yes, which was surprising. Yeah, and um, obviously, I think uh, not obviously, but if he would have said no, I feel like he would have gone to his solo career away from JAS, putting into that faction, and started doing just Chris Jericho. I would have liked to see him, Chris Jericho and Swagger, Jack Swagger. I know he's somebody else now in AEW. Yeah, uh, Jake Hager. Jake Hager. I would I would have liked to see him t- together with him. I thought that would pe- be good. All the other people in the faction, I really didn't really care for. Um, even Garcia, no. I mean, of course, uh, Sammy Guevara, Guevara looks like he's going to do good. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know. I, I didn't see anybody else really um, that really could make a name for themselves. You know, Garcia's trying, but I don't know. Um, but then he said yes. They're walking out, and then the picture. Yeah, I was all like, oh shoot! When they <laughs> said the picture turn around, I was all oh, damn it. Because Callis was not wanting Chris Shark to go back to the picture. He yeah. Say, no, let's go to bars. <laughs> so he, so he, he didn't even think he was going to say yes, yeah. <laughs> and it it backfired tremendously on him. Yeah. Especially with the hat with his head like that. Yeah, it was a picture, you know, uh, Kyle is holding uh, Chris's head. <laughs> so he was already going to try to put one on Chris Jericho already. Yeah. So that already tells what kind of a leader or a person he is. If you're not going to be with me, then you know what? I'm going to do all kinds of stuff for you on you and on, on that. So. Sodom him in the foot, whatever he did. So that was like, like Chris was saying to uh, Kyle, "Is like if, if I were to say no, you're going to kill me or something." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that was just crazy. Uh, but I guess he's not with Callis anymore. I guess no. that was for like a minute. <laughs> so, so now let, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Chris Jericho. I think he said, um, "Will he be by himself?" Yeah, or maybe you know what. Maybe this is time when his uh, when his rock band's gonna go back on concert. Maybe they're gonna go on tour. Maybe yeah. he's gonna stop for a while. Yeah, because I think they they've been on tour. Like they stopped touring for a little bit because they were on tour like early this year, I think. So, but this is the time for all those festivals. They they start coming on. Yeah, I know Blue Ridge is gonna be coming uh, and doing a festival because in the summer you can, but it's too freaking hot no matter where you go. So they really don't do too many outside concerts because it's a lot of medical expenses. Yeah for the for the concert venues to do that because it's mainly outside so i i think now maybe this is the time that they're going to do it yeah or you know um i think it would work out for chris actually you know with a band maybe he do one or two one or two big tours or he just just do back to his chris jericho uh, gimmick yeah just being him i'm curious to see but i'm also curious to see um adam cole with uh, mjf yeah and uh, and they went to outback and they got full you oh. know seeing that uh that the bro session they, they call it i kind of want to go to outback now <laughs> and try it <laughs> uh no. no that's too much too much <laughs> i'm sure we could do it like one time maybe just me and you nobody else because then that bill gets too high 
Like, I don't know about that. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. So then they had a promo together, didn't they? Yeah. In the ring. Uh, I But MJF just, I mean, he outshines Adam Cole on that mic. Always, yeah. Yeah, you know, Adam Cole talks a big game, you know, but he's very short and sweet, but that's pretty much all it is. Even MJF said, you know what, you know what, your story is great, but mine's better. <laughs> and it was. I mean, he talked all from the beginning, from the elite, and and the two people he picked of out of everybody was Cody Rhodes and Adam Cole. Yeah. Um, I get that, but you know what? It goes back to a generation thing. Yeah. Because his... For his age, his generation, it only goes back so far. My age is different, so I go back a little further to see who would he want to wrestle to. But obviously he can't because they're older now and they're retiring. So I'm just trying to see about generational uh, icons for wrestling at that time. Yeah. But one thing I want to point out is during that bro session when uh, Tony Khan got mad at uh, both of them, MJF and Cole. Was when uh, afterwards MJ was saying, you know, twenty six regret that come like come twenty twenty four. Oh, that's right, because supposedly his con his concert, his contract is up. Yeah, and this is where the bidding wars of twenty twenty four come in, and it's a big thing. I, I can't wait till twenty uh, till this year hits uh, ends. So, what do you think? You think uh, MJF will go to WWE? Well, it's actually three choices he has: he can go with Hunter with his company, resign with Tony, or go to Hollywood. So it's just what he wants to do, <laughs> basically. I don't know if he's ready for Hollywood yet. I don't think he'll go to WWE. I think he's in his trace, stay true to his brand, AEW, because realistically, this was his shot in, which is what, three or four years ago? Yeah. And he's just still exploring all that. So I don't see why you would ruin it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not him. I mean, but um, LeBron James did it. <laughs> you know, he he got a, he got into this thing, and then he just jumped, and he keeps jumping right yeah, now. Yeah, because I mean, the it's just like like every two years, I so he just jumped to the different team. You know, I mean, from the way beginning, from the heat to now. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. I I don't see him moving on, but you never know. Like they say, never say never. Yeah. So, but uh, what do you think about that uh, Adam Cole when he was on the like squalling down? Yeah, I, I, see, he keeps that. doing that. He keeps trying to, like, make us think, like, he's going to do something, but then he changes his mind or something. Or is he really thinking about this? Like, he's really trying to turn on MJF. But I don't see why he would do that, because MJF is really taking him under his wing and giving him the popularity. Yeah, because Adam Cole is, is only over because of MJF. So, but... I mean, I started liking Adam Cole when he was MGF. Before that, I was like, eh, Adam Cole. Like, I really didn't care too much about him, you know, as a wrestler and so forth. I'm sure his accolades were good and all that. But, you know, I'm, I'm always, to me, is what have you done for me lately yeah. on, on your shows? So that that's where I'm at. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just his way of trying to push the ballot. You know, stay relevant with that with, with within the uh, the bro faction. Yeah, because uh, MJF could just outsign him. And, oh yeah, yeah I mean, he, he just outplays him everything. Because uh, you know, like you know, like MJF being MJF is just awesome. I like I like I mean I'm a fan of MJF also, but I mean yeah he's he's, he's good at everything he does I think to be honest. Yeah, we'll see. So, what do you think about this massacre with Jeff Hardy and uh, Jeff Jarrett? Oh, yeah, that was kind of weird about the match. Well, I, I thought it was just going to be them two. Yeah. You know, I really didn't think ev there's like there was a chaos that came out of it, uh, you know, everywhere. You know, I knew it was uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's wife or fiance, wherever she is, uh, was going to come out, but I didn't think all this other stuff. Yeah, because with, uh, I think with Roberts, when the ring announcer was saying, uh, was saying that anything goes in this match. Yeah, that's true. I mean, anything goes, but it, because it was a Texas. What a chainsaw massacre, I guess, because the movie comes out what tomorrow or something, yeah. So it was actually like the video game, I think, comes out. Oh, okay, the video game. So they're trying to push this thing, but I, I'm, I'm sure that it's a big promo, you know, a, a, what we call a sponsor for this one here, a big one because he had all the all the things all around. But I don't know, I if it would have been Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Hardy, maybe one other person interrupting on each side. But after that, it was just complete chaos. Like, it was just too unorganized. And 
I don't know. Too many things going on at once. Plus, I don't think Jeff Jarrett at his age should be even doing a Dota Q match at all, to be honest. Because I can take a tool in his body already. Yeah, but I mean, if he could do it, why not? Yeah. We saw a different side of Sting on Dynamite with the idea of uh, what's going with Sword Strickland and his faction. Yeah, he was more like like sitting back and he's kind of like, hey, I, I got something to do, you know, like <laughs> I, I, I could do this, you know. Because to me, I think it was more like, like a Joker role. Yeah, there you go. Yes, like that. Yeah. Because it was just pretty funny how he had that at one of his, I think it was uh, Brian Cage, his manager, uh, like kind of like, what's it called, like uh, as a hostage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he had like, I want a hostage, which is like, like talking to him. He scared him a little bit <laughs> by like yelling in his face. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of weirded out by that too. Like, what was he doing? But yeah, I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, it worked for him. I mean, I, I find this sign of thing is way more like entertaining, to be honest. You know, I, I find any more of it. <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, it would, because on all end, it's Darby, Sting, I forgot who in the other points. I think it was Brian Cage or one of them, or doing a coffee match at all end. So I think this would be a, a good match also for Sting, to be honest. Yeah, I was I was surprised they said a coffin match. I'm like, wow, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, I didn't know. Like, that was crazy. All right. I, I know we already talked about Chris Jericho, but what do you think about Sammy Guevara coming out at the end? Um, I think he's still trying to help out Chris Jericho. We know he knows he really shouldn't, to be honest. But I, I think because I think he's just so close to close to Chris, I think he still wants to help him. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, but okay, think about everybody in the faction. Who's the big name of the faction besides Chris Jericho that can take him places? Sammy or Jake? No, 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 no. no. I know. I'm talking about Sammy Guevara. Oh. Like who else? Be who else can take Sammy Guevara to a next level? Oh no, I don't. Be Christ, think. Besides Chris Jericho, yeah, I don't think anybody. Be honest. Yeah, I mean, so that's why I'm thinking. That's why he's trying to stay loyal to him. You know, uh, Jack um, Hager, Jake, Jake Hager, maybe, but Jake Hager's never been the main event person. Yeah, yeah, he's always been in the background. He tried. I was, I mean, I was rooting for him back in the day, but never could make it. Yeah. Uh, but them two could be a good tag team. Oh, for sure, yeah. But um, but I don't know. I, that's what I was thinking at the end. Wow, this guy really came out. I know he said, if you need me, I'll be there for him. And he was there. Yeah. Because everybody was on uh, <laughs> on Chris Jericho, everybody. Yeah, everybody walked out on him. No, everybody walked out on him, but then everybody was whooping his ass at the end, <laughs> you know? Like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, who's next, you know? Yeah. So we also saw uh, a stadium stampede match uh, to be uh, declared, and it's official between um, the best friends and uh, Orange Cassidy, and in Kingston, and a Blackpool Combat Club, and Death Triangle. So it's different factions coming in? Yeah. Because everyone, besides, because uh, Eddie, and Kingston, and the Death Triangle. Oh, that's right. Yes, right. The best end. friends and Orange Cassidy all hate uh, Blackpool Combat Club. Who's, who's basically just them against uh, like uh, other people. So then who's going to get bloody in here? <laughs> John Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see him by himself. <laughs> you know, cutting himself like always, you know. But uh, yeah, um, I mean, that's... That's going to be a crazy one. Um, I hope it doesn't get too crazy because then you're like trying to watch everything at once, you know? Yeah, plus all the camera cuts also. Yeah, because the camera's trying to get all the good shots, but it's kind of hard when when they got like three good shots, you know? Like, which one do you go to? Where? Yeah, because same as you think you think back to the uh, what was it, double nothing of the anarchy in the, in the arena. Yeah. And you know, stands at Phoenix where they fight all over the stadium and the stands also and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they just want to get the audience what they what they want. Not really the want, but like a show. Yeah, because they they went before it was during quarantine. I think, of course, someone was in the stadium, but <laughs> <laughs> so they went all there. <laughs> no fans were there. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I'm just I'm curious to see. Yeah, so that would be an awesome match too to watch. All right. Well, if you like this video, give us our thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, James will have the social media stuff down in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.